The biggest green energy stock is the topic of today's presentation. And the company that we're going to talk about today is Next Era Energy. So they are a business composed of a number of subsidiaries, which we'll look at in more detail. But uh, just on the tin, they own the largest electric utility in the United States by sales and number of customers. And another component of their business, a significant component, is Next Era Energy. They're a world leader in electricity generated from the wind and sun and a world leader in battery storage. Their renewables portfolio is characterized by high quality cash flows and strong operations. So 72% of their contracts are bus bar. That means that the buyer is responsible for transmitting the electricity they purchase. 15 year average contract life, that gives them some consistency over time. Uh, BBB plus customer credit quality, that ensures that the people who are buying their electricity can pay the bills. And they're in the top decile for wind and solar operations and maintenance performance. So, Next Era Energy is a company we've covered quite a bit over the years. That's because we've owned this stock for over a decade. And here you can see some of the pieces that we've written on them. Uh, 30 years consecutive dividend increases, at least according to our math. And what's nice about this company is that they have a utility risk profile, so they're classified as a utility, yet the performance you get is that of a tech stock. So you're getting uh, value exposure for growth performance. Here you can see how NEE over the past 30 years has performed relative to a utilities sector ETF. So they've uh, returned 973% compared to that ETF at 323%. So a piece we did uh, just over three years ago titled The Biggest Renewable Energy Company in the World is an interesting read because at that time, if you exclude the Saudis, Next Era Energy would have also been the largest energy company in the world. That's because of the Rona. So at the time that we wrote that piece, Exxon's yield had exceeded 10%. To put that into perspective, it's about 3.42% today. So at market close that day, Exxon had a market cap of $141 billion compared to Next Era Energy at 145. So they had exceeded Exxon in size. Well, today that's changed. So Exxon has a market cap of $424 billion. Next era, just at $107 billion. And at the time, Exxon was crashing. That's when the price of oil actually went negative. Now, we were buying up some shares at that time uh, because our methodolo methodology is objective. And we see uh, depressed prices as an opportunity to purchase. And then we ended up selling some shares when the um, price resumed. And that was um, uh, that's a tribute to the importance of a diversification in a portfolio. We've also trimmed Next Era Energy when it's been um, hitting highs. And we trim any stock because it starts to become such a meaningful component, let's say over 6% of a position size in our 30 stock dividend growth portfolio. So the Rona drove shares of Next Era Energy down 43% to $45.50 a share in just two weeks' time. Well, today, shares of Next Era Energy are trading around $50. So some questions we received from a premium subscriber. What's going on with Next Era? Well, we need to put that in context. So year to date, the NASDAQ has performed a positive 30% whilst the utility sector is down 18%. So we shouldn't be surprised at all that Next Era Energy is down, but they're down more than that at 38%. So this individual asked, are increasing interest rates putting pressure on the high debts? Well, intuitively, yes. So Next Era Energy has $72 billion in debt. Well, how big is that? Well, how long is a piece of string? We need to put that in context. But here's the thing. An interest rate increase makes bonds look more attractive to conservative investors who are the type that will be drawn to the utility sector. So it's no surprise that we see utilities as a asset class going down. And this individual also asked, is a company with these debts worth being held in your DGI portfolio, i.e. borrowing money to pay the dividends? Well, Next Era isn't having to do that, but look at Exxon and Chevron. So they have historically managed to be 
dividend aristocrats or dividend champions because they've managed their cash when they, even when they had negative cash flow. So yes, companies can use debt to keep increasing their dividend over time and keep that track record. I want to put on my sales hat for a second and I want to talk a little bit about our Discord server. So if you're not familiar with Discord, it's a software program that lets you, uh, it's a forum back in the days of bulletin board systems. This would be uh, a forum where people could go in and chat. So there are community benefits to this. It's rather easy to sign up. Uh, paying subscribers only are on our Discord server. That's where people can raise questions about stocks we cover, suggest new companies we might look at, so we subject those to a vote, so everybody can kind of vote on what we're going to cover. We have a Rate My Portfolio series that just started where people can DM us and anonymously send us their portfolios, and we'll critique them or provide some insights on, on how we observe their strategies. Um, and more importantly, we can hear from a vetted community of subject matter experts, which is great, so that we can collectively uh, monitor a lot more than just the analysts we have on staff here. So, But it's not for everyone. We run things very tight because people have limited time. So uh, people will say, well, this Discord server is rather quiet compared to others I've been on. Exactly. We want all the information being shared and the discussions being had to be meaningful for the entire audience. So just recently, we've made this Discord server available that you can now access via YouTube subscription. So this is subscribing on YouTube, and here you can see the join button right there. You click it, you sign up for Discord access, and you'll be able to access our Discord server and um, chat. You can DM uh, any of us here at Nanalyze on the server or uh, chat with anybody else about all kinds of different things. So let's get back to NextEra Energy. Somebody had asked on our Discord server, are you worried about NextEra Energy? Well, no, because our sleep well at night DGI strategy means we don't have any decisions to make here or for any of the other 29 stocks in our dividend growth portfolio. If the company stops increasing their dividend, we give it the boot, we find another company that will. That said, of the 30 stocks we're holding, some always give us some cause for concern, as I mentioned with Exxon, right, when oil prices were going negative. So for Next Era Energy, we're interested in exploring two questions. Is the dividend safe, right? So we want to make sure they can keep increasing that dividend. And how's their debt looking in the face of rising rates in case something blows up? So when it comes to dividend growth, Here's the answer to the question, what's happening with Next Era Energy? They revised their long-term growth rate, that's their dividend growth rate, to reduce financing needs, right, to stop taking on more debt, and better position the partnership to continue to deliver long-term value for unit holders. And this slide here from their recent investor presentation uh, says everything. So their growth rate is revised to 5 to 8% per year through at least 2026 with a target of 6%. So that dividend's going to grow at 6%. Well, guess what? Over the past decade, it's grown at 11%. So that's a significant reduction for dividend growth. Now, how big of a deal is that? Well, 6% still beats inflation. And this is to be expected, as with any sector, and how it reacts to interest rates. So when you look here at the historical growth of that dividend. Look how much we've been enjoying that. So as I said, close to 11% over the past decade. Here you can see the past seven years. And those are some very healthy increases. As a result, our yield on cost, which means the money that we invested in NextEra Energy, is now paying us a yield that's over 10%. So Every time that grows, you can see the table on the right there. On the left is a table showing their yield over time. But on the right, you can see our yield on the original money that we invested. So um, with 10% growth expected for 2023 and 2024, our yield on cost would have been upwards of 12% after the 2024 raise. Well, it's not going to be raised so much, but we can still expect to see around 10% yield on cost for that position. And that's not even taking into account any capital gains. Now, I think this chart pretty much spells it out. At the top, you see adjusted earnings per share and their track record over the past 10 years, right? 9.8% compound annual growth. That's awesome. But dividends per share is growing at 11%. Well, something has to give there because earnings per share has to grow enough such that dividends can grow as well. And if dividends are growing faster, then what happens? Your payout ratio becomes compressed. So when we start looking at things like payout ratio, there's a number of ways to evaluate this. And I didn't want to get into it too much, but I think that this slide 
uh, provides some good evidence of their ability to keep paying the dividend. So at the top, you see non-GAAP earnings. This is what everybody talks about for Next Era Energy. And you could see at the very top there, the dollar forty. let's say in 2020, in 2020, they had uh, $2.31 in non-GAAP earnings, and they paid out $1.40. So that's, they still have a lot of buffer there. But if you look at GAAP, which is what we look at, then it was $1.53. Okay, that's fairly close. But then reading to the right, you see how they're increasing the GAAP, if you will, between dividends and their GAAP earnings. But the other thing that you can look at, and somebody raised this in our Discord server, actually, it's a great point. Why don't you look at cash flows? Well, you certainly can. And cash flows, that's what's being generated by the business. You can see those are fairly high. Well, what happens to them? Well, some get poured back into investing in future projects. So NEE does a lot of that. That's how they've been growing, right? It's been investing in future projects. So if they slow down that investment, you expect growth to slow. So uh, as dividend growth investors, we know that there's going to be good times and bad, but we're mainly interested in the dividend increasing over time. So even if this company runs into some trouble, there's still leeway. All they have to do is increase it by the smallest percent, and they'll keep that track record, and investors like us will be happy. Now, let's talk about debt. This is a very complicated topic. I pulled this from a Moody's report that looked at the debt situation for next era energy and that's really who you should be paying attention to pull up any of these reports from fitch or moody's and look at what they have to say about the debt it's very interesting and enlightening so uh, here you can see a publicly traded entity called next era energy partners this came up on our discord server and it's about this publicly traded entity and its relationship to next era energy which can be seen here but when you look at the what 14 percent yield that nep is paying just remember that Yield can change very quickly if a company decides to lower their dividend dramatically. That's the power of dividend growth investing is that they have a track record of not doing that. And that's what creates the value there. If there's a chance at any time that a company can just drop their dividend by 80 or 90 percent, then what does that yield really mean? And that's the perceptions of investors who see the, the possibility of that yield staying like that uh, as quite low. Now, Moody's talks specifically about that entity in this piece that I pulled up. And I just you can read it yourselves. And there's uh, this stuff is floating around out there. But uh, I wanted to point to two statements here by Moody's. The first is that Next Era Energy owns Florida Power and Light Company, one of the largest and financially strongest regulated, vertically integrated electric utilities in the U.S., which is the foundation of its overall credit quality. It's important to remember they built this business so that they had that safe component and then perhaps the more risky component. And it says here at the bottom, Next Era Energy has strengthened its business risk profile by de-emphasizing merchant power activities and focusing on growing its lower-risk, long-term contracted renewables and FERC regulated gas pipeline and electric transmission businesses, a credit positive. So pay attention to how the these rating ratings firms talk about next era energy. If you're interested in that sort of thing, we don't pay close attention to it. All we care about is seeing that dividend check come in and increase every year. So unless someone is asleep at the wheel over at next era energy, managing interest rate risk using hedges is pretty basic stuff. So it's a, a black swan is usually what makes the house of cards come tumbling down. And when you look at the earnings call at the beginning of this year, the firm talked about how interest rate swap products to manage interest rate exposure on future debt issuances are around $21 billion of swaps, and that exceeds the notional value of their 2023 and 2024 maturities. In other words, they're thinking about this stuff. They're anticipating it, and they're paying a lot of money to hedge with interest rate swaps. So, as I said, as long as their risk management team is paying attention to this stuff, we shouldn't have anything to worry about. So just to conclude, all utilities are suffering from higher interest rates right now. NextEra Energy is an exceptionally complicated firm. It doesn't help that their investor deck looks like it was built in the 80s and is completely convoluted. So they could do a better job of making that easier to read. But our DGI methodology makes this very easy. Their 30-year track record appears in no danger from where we're sitting, and that 6% projected growth, that helps manage inflation. So we're not overly concerned about that either. 
But all this debt that they're carrying, so that $72 billion in debt, means the credit rating agencies are watching them very closely. So if you're interested to see how this evolves, you can read those research notes, and they're quite edifying. So I'm going to put up another video here for you to watch on dividend growth investing. But before you watch that, please click the Analyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Think about supporting us with a Discord membership on our YouTube channel as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.